Behind the Wall, the official podcast of West Tigers. Well, hello and welcome to, I guess, a special edition of Behind the Raw. It is episode 26, uh, believe it or not. It is the official podcast of the West Tigers where we kick speculation into touch, where we give it to you straight and where we learn more about the people and the stories behind this great club. As I say, we are here in New Zealand. Uh, it is, in fact, match day. Uh, tonight, West Tigers will play a home game against New Zealand Warriors at uh, FMG Stadium Waikato. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Waikato. It's just up the road from here. No doubt um, most of the crowd will be supporting the Warriors. It is a full house expected, so about 24,000 in attendance. Uh, I'm sure it will be a wonderful occasion. By the time that you're uh, watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, of course, you will know the result. Um, as I say, uh, most of the crowd probably will be Warriors fans, but you know what? That's okay. The reason we've brought this home game uh, across the ditch uh, is to say thank you, really, a gesture of, of our appreciation of what the Warriors went through uh, through the COVID pandemic, and not just the Warriors, but um, New Zealand people in general. They were starved of, of rugby league, NRL home games for almost uh, three years. It's a very warm welcome to a fella who has played well, with the Warriors, that's where he started his career. Also played three seasons with West Tigers. In total, 132 NRL games across nine seasons, including two NRL premierships. He played 16 tests for his country. Um, his debut was for the Warriors in 2000. He then had a year with Melbourne Storm a year later. Then he uh, rolled into uh, Penrith Panthers, the foot of the mountains, and... In his second season there, won a premiership with the Panthers in 2003. In his first season at West Tigers, well, that was 2005. We all know what happened there. He also won a premiership. Um, he then spent a few years in England, came back and played, I think, one game with Parramatta in 2011, then decided to call it a day. Um, a very warm welcome to Behind the Raw to Paul Fatuira. Welcome, mate. I hope I'm saying it right. You said it perfect. Welcome to the land of long, the long white cloud, New Zealand. The weather's good. Uh, it's a bit chilly out there, I've got to say. Uh, the boys arrived here a few days, so we've been in Auckland. Uh, we arrived in Auckland, then came to Waikato. Um, blue sky, so the, the, the white cloud is still out there, but pretty chilly. It is pretty chilly. It's uh, yeah. It does definitely get cold here in New Zealand, but we've picked a good day and fingers crossed. So it will be a nice dry pitch for tonight, so we can see a, a lot of tries from our Tigers. As I say, uh, this will drop uh, well next week, so it's match day here on on the Saturday. Um, regardless of the result, how it turns out, the event itself, Paul, um, it's a great gesture what the what West Tigers, your old club, has done. And it's been really well received, not just here in Waikato, but right throughout New Zealand. Exactly. I've been watching a lot of the social media feeds uh, through the West Tigers and just to see the support from the locals here in New Zealand. Uh, the West Tigers, although we haven't had our best season, the support's still there. And hopefully the boys can finish off the season nice and strong and, and get ready for next year. I know you've got um, yeah, people have been walking around here past players, coaches, trainers, you know, a lot of the people within this club. I guess that's one of the things, isn't it, about playing the greatest game of all. You make some of these friendships that last a lifetime. You do, and I agree with you. I, I believe rugby league is the greatest game of all. It's also the hardest game of all. And yeah, for myself personally, I was able to create some special memories here at the Tigers. And although we were at the... The bottom end of the table this year, you, you still want them to do well. Mm. And uh, I'm just really grateful to to be here amongst the Tigers organisation and, and doing our best to pr promote the club, but also support the players. You, um, It's a real buzz around town, isn't it? On the streets, you can sort of feel it. And as I say, with, with a full house, you know, the whole oh. town is talking a, a, about this. So you're doing a bit of corporate work for us tonight as well? I've got your tickets, by the way, and your 
your accreditation. I've got to give you. Got you got my shirt too. I don't I've got mind the hoodie. Got you one of these. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Chris. But but again, like having an attachment to the club, you you played three seasons. You worked with the club for a few years as well in the well-being space. Yes. Um, and that attachment will always be there, I imagine. Yeah, that's right. And when your time's done, you, 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 you look upon those great memories you had at clubs, especially when you win a premiership, and the, 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 the brotherhood, uh, it is, it is uh, a special bond that you, you have post-football. Uh, and, and like I said, I was a bit of a journeyman, not going to lie. Yeah. I was able to play it. Was played at a number of clubs, but the Tigers and obviously the Panthers were where I was able to create some some special memories, and that uh, brotherhood, that mateship, doesn't end post football career. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll dive into your, your football career a bit bit more. We'll uh, we'll talk about your life as well. Um, you've lived a very interesting and continue to live a, an interesting life, a fulfilled life, right? Mm. Um, and you've had your troubles. We'll talk about that a whole lot more. How this works, I don't know if you've ever tuned into a behind the raw. Probably not. Maybe you But have. I will. You will. So we'll kick things off with a set of six. All right. Okay. So I'll ask you six questions and we'll get to know you a bit better. Yeah. Okay. We'll do some more deep diving chat, middle of the show and wherever it takes us. Yeah, you know, we'll let our hair down. Sounds good. Oh, well, whatever. you can do that. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then at the back end, uh, with about five to go, see that clock up there? Yeah, when that's about five minutes to go, we'll okay, have... Okay, that clock, yep. yeah. <laughs> we'll have uh, your favourite five. Sounds Moments, good. memories, people, places. Okay, yeah. Chris. All right, you ready to roll? Yeah. Ready to roll, bro. Can you give us a little roll? Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> right, so listen, um, your NRL debut, so it is for, well, they were then called Auckland Warriors. Uh, <clears throat> guess who you're playing? You're playing West Tigers, NRL debut. It's at Leichhardt Oval, Monday the 14th of February. Referee Mark Oten. You come off the bench uh, in your team. You've got the likes of uh, Nigel and Joe Vankada. Uh Your captain is John Simon. Jason Deeth, who I know very well. Deethy, hello to you. Uh, your half was Robbie Mears, who is actually over here now with our Cubs. How good. Yeah. Um, well, and he coached the... Harold Matts last year to up for the oh, West. Okay. Um, first ever premiership for, for West with awesome. the Matts. Uh, he's in Auckland, as I say, with right now with the Cubs. Uh, Monty Beetham was also in your team um, and quite a few others as well. Right, so there is the whistle. Do you hear that? And away we go. So let's kick things off um, with the opening set of six. You ready? Okay. How, how well do you remember your NRL day? Quite well, actually. It was only three minutes. So Is I didn't do much got? yet. <laughs> but there's a backstory to it. Mark Graham was the coach. Yep. And he, I was 18. And he said, look, you've been training well in the preseason. You play well in the trials. I'll tell you what, you're going to come to Sydney with the team for two weeks. You're not going to play. No. You're just going to go over here and experience what it's like to stay in a five-star hotel, uh, spend some time with, with the first grade players. Uh, little did I know, three hours before the game, uh -huh. he gave me a tap on the shoulder and said, hey, Fats, you're playing. Yeah. Here I am, 18 year old. First time I've stayed in a hotel, yeah, <laughs> five star hotel, having all this extra extravagant, beautiful food. I'm probably eating more than I usually do. I put on four kilos, yeah. and here I am, uh, ready to make my debut with three hours of, of notice. So, a late injury was there, or what? No, nah, he just just had a ch change of mindset mm. and, and gave me a start. And three minutes is that's what I played the last three minutes of the game, and he put me into second row which was a position that I've never played before. I know I didn't touch the ball, but I know I tried to make plenty of tackles. That's what I did do. I'm just trying to work out, uh, one of our other guests that we've had here this year was also at Leichhardt. Who was it? Um, and he got all of about a minute or two minutes. <laughs> I'm trying to work out who it was. And he was looking up at Sheens. He said, when are you going to throw me on? It might have even been Hino. Anyway, do you, do you, it was... Um, Probably because you didn't think you were playing might have been the way to go, like not a whole lot of pressure on you, huh? Most likely. He's probably trying to look after me and thought, hey, why not just tell him three hours before the kickoff and uh, just chuck me straight in the deep end. It was either sink or swim. Did you feel like, yeah, that's it though. You, you, you made your NRL debut. 
even though it was only a few minutes. You... Yeah, definitely was excited, nervous at the same time. I was marking John Hopawati actually. Yeah. And at that time, he was one of the. He was yeah. in form. Yeah. And uh, I thought, wow, I've just tackled John Hopawati. That was a massive uh, ego boost for me. <laughs> but hey, it went quickly. It was only three minutes. And uh, yeah, I'm grateful that Mark Grant gave me a start. Yeah, absolutely. I was Do only you... 18 too, so. Yeah. And it was the start of a, what was a wonderful career for for you. Do you remember? Um, do you remember the score? Did, did you win? Yeah, or lose? I do. I remember clearly. We're actually behind. Actually, we were winning. And Owen Craigie, what a classy play he was. It was about two minutes ago. I know because I was on, on the field for three minutes. So it was in between that time. Yeah, he did a left foot chip over a couple of the players, caught it, and ran forty meters for a try. So, yeah, so okay. we lost 17-16. I was going to ask you the score, Fats. You okay. got it, 17-16. Here's a bonus point question then. Um, who kicked the field goal for West Tigers? Who kicked the field goal for the West Tigers? In that game, 17-16. I'm going to have to go on Craigie. That's a guess right there. I'm not even sure. I've got down here Craig Field. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, Craig Field. There you go. Might need to... I just re remember Owen Craigie's freakish try. Yeah, yeah good play. Uh, what about your junior footy, Paul? What, take us through that, your, your pathways, when you began playing and when you sort of knew that you, you know, were a decent player and, and could have aspirations to play NRL. Mm. I started playing rugby league at the age of 17, 7. 17-7 in my hometown of Wani or Mata. My father played at a higher level in, in the domestic competition here in New Zealand. Yeah. My older brother played rugby league and in Wani or Mata, a small town of 16,000 people, wow. we had legends like Johnny Lomax, Tana Umanga, Piri Wipu uh, yeah. that uh, played the game. So I was just brought up with talent around me. It was more so because my friends played it, my brother played it, it was for fun. And I think when I started to get a bit more serious about it, was it I was about 15, 16. Mm. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to have a bit of a crack here. Uh, and started to, I actually received a scholarship to go to the Melbourne Storm in 1999. They came over and ran a, a footy camp for 50 aspiring yeah. uh, footy players. Yeah. And fortunately, I was one of them that got... One of two that got chosen to go over to Melbourne and train with the first Who grade was the team. Other, do you remember? His name was Jamie McDonald. Right. Yeah. He, he ended up going into the police force. So he got me a t booked me a ticket to Melbourne at the age of 16 and trained with Tauri Nico, Matt Roa, Richard Swain. Yeah. This was the, the year pre-season leading up to the premiership win. Yeah. So having that week with the Melbourne Storm, when I returned home to Wellington, I thought, you know what, that's exactly what I want to do. And I dedicated every single day uh, mm. towards my training, my new craft, uh, to, to make it in first grade. And yeah, so 16 was the age that I really started to focus on yeah. my football career. And, and what about is, is it Wellington? Is that the small town you spoke about then? That, that's in Wellington? Yeah, a small a town in Wellington, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your family then? You, you, Tell us a bit more about your family then. I have an older brother, younger sister. I've just brought up in a f sporting family. Like I said, my, f my father played league. Yeah. In the summertime, it was softball, touch, footy. It was already footy. Mapped, out, mapped out for you, huh? Well, Almost. I wouldn't say mapped out. I still had to. I wasn't... You were going to be a sports person. Yeah, I was a sports person, but I, through going through the grades, I wasn't the standout no. athlete. In all my sports, I just loved Loved playing sport. It, it kept me out of trouble mm. and uh, got to make new friends and got to travel around New Zealand because of my sport. But I thought, you know, I'm at the age of 15, 16, I'm going to have a really good crack at this. And, and instead, of going to, instead of going to parties, mm. I was running the streets at five o'clock in the morning because I knew I had to work harder than the next person because mm. I had a bit of talent, but definitely wasn't the standout performer in my district. Yeah, yeah. And... Your family now, um, three kids. I have three kids. Uh, I'm, I'm like a full-time Uber driver. Yeah. <laughs> and my my wife Trina, we we re we reside in Tamaki, Auckland. I've been living back in Aotearoa now for for six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, 
away from footy when you get a bit of me time? What does Paul Fatuera like to do? Yeah, I'm, I'm 42 now, so I'm a bit, bit older, but a little bit wiser. They party as hard as I used to back in the younger days. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a family man. I like to be... Yeah. I like to be a family during the weekends. I, I still value my, my well-being and exercise and training is a sort of uh, an important part of my life. Uh, play social touch. Might, might play the old Masters Rep League game from time okay. to time. You still got it? I wouldn't say I still got it, but it's just more so getting out there and having a bit of fun and yeah. not trying to hurt anybody. It's more, more so like cuddles rather than tackling the masters. We'll talk about that because I, 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 I was looking at some video footage last night. You stepped in the ring last, was that last year? White collar yes, boxing? Or yeah, it was a Fight for Life event. It's, it's one of the biggest boxing events here in New Zealand uh, through uh, DNL events. They do a great job. Yeah. And what they do, do is, it's a league versus rugby event. And they get former All Blacks, former Kiwis to, yeah, to, to fight against each other. And yeah, I got, had had a, had a great opportunity to, to have a have a go at it for and a good cause well, for a great cause, obviously Mike King's uh, charity. Yeah, and uh, yeah, great experience. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that too. Uh, I also saw some, and always always for a good cause. Yeah. Uh, um, I think Robbie Farrell was involved too. You, you sort of got your gear off, and was that, <laughs> what was that? Um, um, Men of League or... Uh, more like a noodle calendar, league. It was a, a calendar. Noodle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we might dive into that <laughs> as well. <laughs> I know Fass, had, you know, he's still looking very good. Fass, he looks after himself. Uh, we try. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us, um, tell us something about... Uh, quite a few of the boys are rocking in now, ready to have their uh, their lunch before heading off to the stadium. So, um, I don't know if... Uh, there's Fass now. Oh, there's Fafi. Walking through. I told you he's looking good. Rob, Robbie Farrah, just over there. He might even pop in and just say, hey, hey. say hello. <laughs> um, tell, tell us something about yourself that I don't know, people might not know. Well, people might not know. Wow. Is it... oh, you put me on the spot here, one. Chris. Yeah, it's a tough one. I love to read. Love well, yeah, to read. Yeah, what, what sort of books do you I love do? reading biographies. Yeah. I love reading about positive mindset changes. I love reading about champions like Robbie Farrah, who's just rocked in here. <laughs> there he is. I knew he had to dive in. Well, do we want to go there? We don't want to go there. Thanks, Robbie. <laughs> so, so this is probably going to happen when you do film in a place like this. A lot of you good, good old mates are going to be uh, rolling past. Um, typical day. Final question in the final set of six. A typical day for you. Typical day. It starts early. I'm up at 5 a.m. Yeah. every morning. Yeah. The family's sort of asleep. So they're like clockwork? Pardon? Like clockwork? Like clockwork. Yeah. I, I have a small gym set up in an office, so I like to meditate. I love to exercise. Well, actually, no, 80% of the time I don't want to exercise. Yeah. But I know 100% of the time after I finish doing a workout, I feel great. Yeah. I love to read in the morning, so that first two hours is like me time. So when my family get up, I don't feel like my day is in a rush. And yeah. it sets my day. Yeah. So exercise, meditate, read, and do what I need to do to get ready for yeah, the yeah. day before the family wakes up. Healthy body, healthy mind. That's it. Mm. Yeah. All right, well, that's the set of six. Brighton's lawyers are the lawyers you know and trust. If you require legal representation, then why look anywhere else? Call Brighton's lawyers on 1800 848 848. Brighton's lawyers, we do support you in your time of need. Let's let's crack on and, and dive a little bit deeper into your story, um, into your life. And I know, as I said earlier, you had some you had some dramas, some some problems when you went to to England after your, your three years with West Tigers. We'll talk about that. But with with, with your footy, did you have the the magic touch? I mean, you, you arrive at Panthers. And within two years, you've won a premiership there. You arrive at West Tigers in 05, and the very first year you're there, you win another premiership. Not many people get to win one premiership, Paul, yet, yet alone two. Um, very fortunate, but you obviously had a, played a key role in that. Yeah, it's all to do about time, and then definitely didn't have the, the magic ingredient. Uh, looking back before those two premierships, I was cut by the Warriors. I went to the Melbourne Storm and I was cut by the Melbourne Storm as well. So that's coming back from two two teams that 
unfortunately just wasn't good enough to make at that time and I'm looking back at it now as we can uh, I I guess I give myself a tap on the back for not giving up yeah but also uh, grateful for Steve Noyce and Tim Sheens for for giving me an opportunity at the Tigers at that time they weren't in the top eight uh, no. what I did know is they had a young inspiring player of the name of Benji Marshall and Robbie Farrell was coming up the ranks I knew there was definitely potential yeah and for me it was more so going to a team where we could grow and see where that can take us and uh, yeah so there's many things that come to factor definitely not the the magic stick no it's just just good timing and a bit of good luck when you arrived at West Tigers in 05 then um oh look we all want to win a premiership right we all want mm. to make the finals did you sort of in in your belly feel like something special might happen here this year didn't come overnight but it did start to come halfway through the season we won, went on a seven to eight uh, mm. winning streak i believe or something like that anyway i think it was and a slow start too. it was a very slow start yeah. extremely slow start yeah but as it happens, is that when you start to win consistently, you you build, you build those winning habits, and they come at the back of hard work. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, we used to hang out even away from from footy. So I think uh, mm. when you, when you were also connected on the field, but away from the field, mm. it definitely uh, built us stronger together. I was going to ask you, and this is yeah, what would you say, Paul, that season, two thousand and five? What was what were the key things about the team and the club itself you think that contributed to you winning a premiership? Uh, firstly, we worked hard. Uh, we, we had fun away from the football field. We were able to connect as as good friends, as as brothers, and like any successful business or football team, we, we, we built that trust through uh, going in the trenches and facing those tough moments on the on the training field but also within those moments of of uh, the back end of some tough games uh, so yeah that's i think that's the three ingredients that made us uh, success and mm. and a bit of luck too mm. went too many injuries although benji was carrying a, a sick shoulder throughout the whole season and still played a tremendous season mm. and that belief tim sheen's made us believe Mm. And, and when we believe in ourselves, we believe in each other, uh, good things happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, back to your NRL debut year. So what happened to the Warriors? Why didn't that work out? Uh, to be honest, I, personally, you? You I, I always wanted to play in Australia at right. that time. Yeah. My goal was to travel to Australia and live in Australia and play in Australia. Uh, it was just uh, it was just the Warriors were the only team there that offered me a contract when I was 16, 17. So I came up to the Warriors and, and did my apprenticeship and grateful for Mike Graham to give me a start. Mm. But my mind was set at Melbourne. At yeah, that time, right. they were the best in the league. They've just won a, a premiership. And I thought, if you want to be the best that you can be, you need to learn from mm. the best team. And, and that was the Melbourne Storm. So when I travelled to Melbourne a year later, uh, although I only played six first grade games, that was my apprenticeship on knowing how to conduct yourself as a professional, how to look after yourself, looking up to Stephen Kearney and, and Richard Swain and how they conducted themselves away Tawira, from the football field. was he there at that stage? Tawira wasn't there no. at that time, no. He moved to, he would have been in, in the UK. Matty Guy. Yes. Robbie Kearns? Wolfa, yes. Robbie Kearns, again, legends. who Rod Rodney Howe? Rodney Howe. Yep. These are some of the, the Western Reds, mate. So. Yes. Yeah. So those players were my mentors who I looked up to and yeah. and learned a lot about professionalism. Yeah. yeah. So when I got to Penrith, I, I had their the winning mentality and that's what got me through. So why was it just the one year at the Storm? What happened there? At that time, it wasn't of lack of discipline. Mm. I had a good Preseason, play well in the trials. It's just that the players at that time were were better than me, yeah. and I just needed the chance, and I wasn't going to get a chance there. We had Aaron Mule and yeah. Junior Lange with their starting centres, and at that time they were just better centres than me, and it's just Junior the name Lange. of the game. Yeah, yeah, and I there was no room for me in the top twenty-five, 
So then I had to relocate to the Queensland Cup and play for the reserve grade team, uh, Brisbane Norths. Yes. Alongside Billy Slater and well, yeah, and Cameron Smith. Oh, so they weren't there yet. They weren't there yet. So we we lived next to each other. Mm. We were all part-time footballers. We weren't working. We were training mm. through the day on our own, and then we we're training at night with our football team. Yeah. So that was my life for two months. So when 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 you saw Billy and Cameron. So they hadn't played NRL yet, right? No. Did you know? Did you see something pretty special? Did you and, know? And Cooper Cronk was there too. Was there? I saw something special in. Tell me that team Billy. won the premiership. Pardon? You must have won the premiership. Well, I only played four games before I was picked up by Penrith. Right. So I'm not actually quite sure how they finished that season they might have, in 02. They might have moved on and won them. Yeah, yeah. So Cooper Cronk was there. Billy was a freakish yeah. fitness fanatic. Like I've never seen anybody as fit as him. Cooper surprised me how much of a legend he turned out to be. Yeah. And I remember my last training session for Brisbane Norse because I was going to the Panthers the following week. He, uh, Cooper said to me, good luck, Fats. I'll, I'll see you in first grade. That's his last words he said to me. And at that time, I thought, oh, really? But hey, look, so, so, look, so, look how good he is now. So Cooper wasn't like a standout. Oh, like, he's a quality uh, player. Quality player, but quality. he didn't show the signs that, well, this guy's just a... Yeah freak and he'll definitely play in RL but he had the belief huh? he had the belief and he had the work ethic and look at him now he could be a future immortal in, in my books anyway what an outstanding career he had yeah wow and so then okay you, you arrive at Penrith um so who's coaching the Panthers at that point Johnny Lang Johnny Lang you so know again in 02 in 02 so how I ended up at the Panthers was a bit of luck as well. And the Queensland Cup at that time, they, were, they only televised one first grade game yep. per weekend. And fortunately, it was ours. And the Panthers were playing the Broncos that weekend. Shane Richardson yes. was the CEO at the Panthers at the time. Was watch, was watching our game on TV. Yeah. Luckily, I had a, a good game. He, he called me up that evening. He said, Fats, I want you to come to my hotel the next day. So I said, yep, where, where are you? He was staying at the Holiday Inn. So I rocked up the next day and on the table, he already had my contract yep. set out. And like, like I said, I've just been cut by two mm. NRL teams. I'm on the lifeline here. I'm only 20 years of age. Three-year deal on the table. It was a one-year deal. What was it? <laughs> it was a one-year deal. Roll into three. But what I read was, I didn't see the numbers because there wasn't too many zeros, to be honest. No. <laughs> I just read in my mind, opportunity. And I signed that contract. The following two days, I was done and... I travelled to uh, Sydney and the rest is history. Yeah, yeah. So then um, you win the Premiership with the Panthers in, in 03, play another year in 04, um, and you are developing into one of the world's best left-edge centres. Um, really strong defensively, but a gifted all-round all mm -hmm. game. Fast forward three years, West Tigers, another Premiership. Then at the end of what, 08, the third year at West Tigers, what happened there? You, you Did you want to go and explore footy overseas in the UK? Did you want to stay at West Tigers? I wasn't around here in those mm. days. Did it? Was it you or them? Or? Oh, it was definitely me. Yeah. Uh, looking back at it now, like I played like n nearly 100 first year games straight with no serious injuries. I had a good run yep. leading up to that grand final in 05. 06 is when the niggles started to happen. I yep. started pulling my hammy. I was out for half the season. The, the following year, I started pulling my calves. I was getting a bit older, 26. Yeah. And which is not old, but... Which is not old, but I debuted when I was 18. Yep. And I could just feel my body breaking down a little bit, to be honest. Yep. And one game I missed, I, I suffered a concussion. We were playing against the North Queensland Cowboys. And I, got, I passed the... The, the head test mm. and we're in, the, we're in the team meeting on the Tuesday and I'm, I'm there for an hour Tim Sheens is, is talking I couldn't pay attention my mind was blurry I could, my vis vision was not good so I went up to the coach and I said look man I, I don't think I'm right for this weekend I, was, I was, wasn't yeah. right and he, and he looked after me and said look just have a good have a rest anywho they tra the team travelled to, to Brisbane and here I am watching uh, and Chris Lawrence made his debut at, the, at, to, at that time. He was only 17 yeah. years of age. And what a blinder Chris Lawrence had on his debut. He scored a great try, set up another two. 
he was a standout. He was 17 and yeah. playing in my position. I thought to myself, shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I better start thinking about next year. This kid's got something special here. Yeah. Uh, but no. Nah. Honestly, my I knew the club would be in good stead. Chris Lawrence ended up being a, a legend for the club. It was more so me. My body was breaking down, yeah. and I had to start thinking business-wise. I had to think lo longer term. Let's be honest here. The, mm. the Super League competition is a good competition, but it's not as hard it's not. Yep. and as demanding as the NRL. Yep. And I had to think body-wise, yep. uh, mentally, spiritually, and also Money. financially as well. Yep. Yeah, uh, that that Chris Lawrence debut. You know, so we had oh. Hino on here. Uh, oh no, when, when Hino has told the story, I think Hino was on the plane next to Chrissy Lawrence on the way back from that game, mm. and I think Hino was suggesting to Chrissy uh, have a couple of sherbets. You know, you've made your debut, son, and he he pulled out his bag from up over the the lockers, and he he pulled out his his maths and English. He had his HSC exams the next day, apparently. There yeah. you go. <laughs> and uh, Heine, I think Heine was trying to convince him to um, <laughs> have a couple of celebratory. He was a, he was a, what I can remember, he was a disciplined young man. Yeah. And he continues to be disciplined, Chris, in, in life and in business. He's doing really well. But it's just good to see the great work ethic yeah, that Chris no, had he's... at the age of 17 and that followed throughout his career. Yeah, yeah. No, a lot of it. A lot of it does come down to, to work ethic. You've got to have a fair bit of ability as well. Certainly helps um, along the way. So uh, we go over. To, you go to go to England. Um, your NRL career ends, but it's a new future for you. Um, on the field, things are going good, right? I think you were man of the player of the year, and you you you, you score and tries, and mm. everything seems to be honky dory in two thousand and eight with Huddersfield Giants. Um, and then you came into some troubles in your life in 09, right? And you're happy to, to talk openly yeah, about course. that. What was at the root of those problems? So uh, let's, let's go into it. You were, um, ended up spending almost two weeks in a, a mental health facility. You went off the rails a bit. It was a, it was a low point in your life. Mm. But since that point, Paul, it's inspired you to do some really good things in, in the, the wellbeing space, right? Correct. Can you take? Are you happy to talk through what what sparked it? What what went wrong? What was what was the key issues? Yeah, there was a number of key issues. Looking back at it now, I was living in England. A, a, a Did fair, you have family fair, with you? At the no, time? I didn't. I, it was a it was a long way, long long distance from home, uh, New Zealand and Australia. Had you been away from home? Had you been to UK before? I've been to. The UK, plenty of times, what triggered it was was becoming a father yep. and the responsibilities of, of becoming a father. And looking back at my own childhood, and unfortunately, I, I was uh, brought up in, although I had love and care for my parents and I was brought mm. up uh, well and definitely mm. grateful for my upbringing. Uh, unfortunately, I, I noticed a number of things in my, in my life. And we're talking, I was brought up in a lower economic society yep. and and yeah at a young kid i was exposed to things that you would not want your mm. children to be exposed to yeah. and becoming a father triggered those memories that i tucked away mm. in the closet and as as we all know when you start thinking negatively and you you replay pasts mm. especially negative pasts it can definitely interrupt your your mental state and mental well-being and and you you, you mentioned too I, I, I spent four weeks in a psychiatric mental hospital that was six months of suffering from uh, depression uh, losing did you, my know you, did you know you were depressed, depressed no i didn't i did i tried to mask it uh, tried to mask it by spending long nights out with the boys uh, making poor choices on decisions on my health and it, it definitely uh the the heaviness of of continuing to live in your past uh, it it definitely uh, plays a, a negative effect on your mm. your mindset and uh, I, I spent seven nights of not sleeping uh, worrying mm. and then when you don't sleep you know, your mind starts to play just play tricks on you uh, unfortunately I suffered a psychotic episode I checked myself into a hospital yeah check myself out three o'clock in the morning and 
and unfortunately was arrested mm. uh, because I was mentally unwell. And, and then I spent yeah, four weeks in a psychiatric, mm. psychiatric hospital trying to, trying to find myself and then cut a long story short, five years of being heavily medicated, uh, still making poor choices on decisions in my house, surrounding myself with, with uh, people that weren't having a positive effect on my life. I mm. isolated myself away from my former teammates, my family, and then I obviously paid the ultimate price of uh, losing my marriage, uh, my child, mm. and then, yeah, as well as being heavily medicated, mm. Uh, living in numbness, I had to rediscover myself again, and that was a hard battle, but we, we got there. How long was the numbness? How many years you took? Five years. Wow. Five years, heavily medicated. Wow. Uh, five years, isolated away from the West Tigers, my former teammates, my, my brothers, and, and my, my, my family as well. Uh, it was just when you, people who, are, who have been mentally unwell would resonate with this, when you are sick mentally, you, you put your guard up. And you protect yourself from mm. from the people that love you the most, and and that's what I did. Well, you, just, you felt like hiding. You felt. You, did you feel? I don't know. Ashamed in any way? Did you? Did it, because you probably didn't have the support networks that we have in the mental well-being space now. Yeah, I, I felt. You know, and rugby league was a big identity of mine. And and when you retire, you lose that. And you're a household name right now. You know, at this point, so you're a very high-profile athlete oh i wouldn't say high, uh, but, but, high but, profile but we but, did okay, but even Chris. high profile athletes <laughs> are human and, mm. and have these problems but they are in the public eye right yeah and I, I i believe every athlete goes through this and also every director ceo goes through, through this too your, your identity you you are attached to the rugby league identity everyone knows you as a mm. rugby league player uh, at the age of six this your only goal was to play first grade once you, once you finish professional sport, well, who are you now? And, I, and, every, and players have their own timing and how they get out of that rut. Uh, unfortunately, mine was a five, six year period. Wow, yeah. Because you know, you've been built up as this, this tough, immensely talented professional athlete. And I guess the public perception is, you know, they're superhuman, these guys. Mm. But in real terms, you have the same problems, if not more, than yeah, your average bloke or, or woman on the street, yeah. Mm. But you are in the public eye, so you're probably trying to hide those issues. Yeah, that's why that's why I feel for our today's players because social media is dominant now, and uh, they are under the spotlight twenty four seven. Back in the heyday, back in twenty thousand mm. years ago, back in dinosaur years, back in our time, mm. uh, it wasn't so like that. No. No, and you wouldn't admit that you have any issues, you know? Mm. That would be seen as, as, as you know, a weakness. But it's okay to, to cry. It's okay to talk to people, to unload, tell them how you... They're, they're the messages I guess you're putting through now in your, your current work that you're doing, not just in sport, right? But mm. tell us more about your, your current role in, in the wellbeing space and you know, what you enjoy most about it. Mm. I am the director of Himano Roto Internal Strength. It is a positive mindset uh, enhancement course that we deliver across New Zealand. Uh, myself and my team, we, we target adults, young teenagers, uh, the corporate sector and also professional athletes. We deliver a one week, 12 module program that helps uh, each individual take better care of themselves, uh, build their self-confidence, their self-worth, and understand that it is their birthright to self-confidence, the importance of sleep, uh, practicing good habits, and, and what it takes to win in life. And uh, yeah, we're doing some great work out there and hoping to get back to Australia very soon. Yeah, good. To deliver some of our, our work over in Australia, because I spent a lot of time in Australia as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll do be sure to pop into uh, the Zurich Centre. We, you, you're probably aware we've got, you know, um, a really good well-being team and most clubs do now and mm. things are probably very different even, even now than say 10 years ago um, or even during the time you were having your issues I think clubs are more geared up and the NRL is probably more geared up to recognise and to to help support 
athletes because a lot of them particularly go when they go through retirement they just don't handle that transition mm. because and, and like what we're seeing here now as a professional athlete an nrl player your day is all mapped out for you you know where you've got to be and what you've got to do and i guess suddenly when that all goes some people find themselves um not quite sure what to do exactly it's a privilege playing first grade you get to stay at a nice five-star hotel, you get beautiful food, you get people running around for you, so then you can be the best that you can be on the field. So it is definitely a privilege. It's also important for our athletes of today to to remain humble, remain grounded, and don't forget where you've come from, but also enjoy being a first-grade player because it, it is a, a great opportunity. It's, it's, it's something that not everyone is able to do, and... It's, it's important to, you know, protect your craft and, and do mm. well in your craft because it's only a short time. Yeah. The NRL stands for not not real long. Yes. Because your career's not real long. No, right. You're right. You're right. What would you say then, a bit of advice, Paul, like say to, 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 to these younger players, and we have got a very young squad at, at West Tigers, um, in, in terms of planning for your future, when should you start thinking about that? Today. Yep today surround yourself with good people think about your education education is important i learned the hard way i re retired at 29 and and didn't have a degree to my name i had to go and, and get my degree post football but stay grounded surround yourself with family good people and, and give it your all it's only a short time give it your all and your body is your temple that, that is your bread and butter so look after it mm. The greatest asset. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mate, we, um, we're we getting... Oh, gee, this year, look. Oh, there's a good clock. I told a you massive keep, clock just quietly. I told you to keep your eye on that <laughs> clock. Bryden's lawyers are the lawyers you know and trust. If you require legal representation, then why look anywhere else? Call Bryden's lawyers on 1800 848 848. Bryden's lawyers, we do support you in your time of need. Let, let's roll on. Um, Favourite five time. Fats, favourite okay. five time. It's, it's, it's lots more of these boys are rolling through. Big boys the out there these days. I'll tell you what. Do you think they're, they're I'm like a little that? miniature version compared to. <laughs> man. Oh, you had some big boys in the, in the 05. Oh, we did, the but they're definitely team. more. Uh, what Chiseled. can I say? Chiseled. And they train for a purpose now, Chris. Back in the heyday, it was just run up the hill because it's tough, but now everything's so calculated, scientific. The training is measured. Yeah. They're yeah. definitely. No, it's uh, yeah. better, better athletes today than what it was back in our heyday. The high performance. Well, well, Moose was Moose around. He was. He was. He just arrived to the club when I left, but he was when I worked in the education well being space. He was here talking about yeah, chiselled bodies. The Moose, Moose, head of high performance. Uh, he's still in very good shape. He'll tell you that himself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I um, no, I do digress. That player I was saying before when I say he was on the bench and only got about three minutes at Leichhardt on debut. Dean Hallitow, I reckon it was. I think it might have been Dino. Okay. And he was looking up the stands and trying to get Sheensy's attention. When am I going on? So like you, I think he only got three minutes okay. on debut at Leichhardt. I'll tell you what, better three minutes than no minutes, eh? Absolutely. All right, let's uh, let's yeah. So let's dive into it. We're, I know you're busy. You've got to get out to um, the stadium not shortly to get ready for your big game and your, your corporate role out there. So are you, are you speaking? Are you speaking engagement? Just doing... I don't actually know what I'm doing. I've just rocked up to this hotel. I'm just going with the flow. So we'll just have to see You're when we right. get there. You're right. I'll get you your tickets and your, your little yeah, <laughs> lanyard and uh, just tell them who you are, mate. They'll have a red carpet out for you. No, they won't. No. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Um, all right. So favourite five time. Um, who was your favourite? Who was your favourite? There's another one just rocking past there. Who's that? I see, was it? Isaiah Papa Lee, good boy, good fella. Who was your um, favourite player growing up? Favourite player, favourite player growing up had to be the great Mal Meninga. Yeah, I was a Canberra Raiders fan back in the back Were in the day, back in the day. Yes, yeah, yeah. legend. Yeah, devastating. Yeah. yeah, what a weapon. No, there'll only ever be one Mal, right? I wonder how Mal would go in the in the current game. 
wouldn't be in the centres, I don't think, would he? Maybe not his last two years. We push him into Lockford, maybe. But definitely he was a big man. He could still move. He was quick. He was powerful. He was fast. Yeah. He, edge, he was hard edge, to stop. Edge forward. He'd do some damage. Oh, one of the, one of the all time greats. I didn't know. Okay, so he, he was your yeah. he was your hero. Um, okay, at West Tigers, other than the 05 Premiership win, your best moment. Best moment will have to be 03 with the Panthers Grand Final. Uh, I was I was young then, so I didn't really appreciate what, what winning the Grand Final was like. I was 21. So actually the next year not winning it and then going to the Tigers and winning it, I was, I was more appreciative of how hard you have to work and the luck that you needed to have to win that grand final. So 03, but also playing for the Kiwis against Australia in the Tri-Nations grand final. Yeah, thumped it, didn't you? 24-0. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, a great win. Where was that? Was that... Um, it's in Leeds. Leeds? Yeah, yes. yeah Headingley. Yeah, I was there. What year? 05. Yeah. Wayne Bennett was a coach yep, for Australia. Yep, 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 yep. I was there. I was doing some work with um, Sky Sports. Okay. I remember I had to interview Wayne. I'd never yeah, met you, him. You wouldn't have I don't think he liked me. <laughs> never met me. Yeah. Didn't give me much. Yeah, that's, that's the typical Wayne though, isn't it? I had to go back to the executive producer and say, oh, I didn't get much out of him. He understood. Mm. That was Wayne. Yeah. Um, Okay, stranded. I haven't. You don't know what these are, right? These questions because they're d stranded on a desert island for one month. Wow. You ready? I'm ready. You got to take three people with you. They got to be former teammates. Former teammates. Yep. So think about it, Fats. Like you know, one month is a long time. So you know, you got to, I guess, enjoy their company. Okay. They got to bring something to the table, or they wouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Liam Fulton. Liam. Reason why. He's yes. hilarious. He can sometimes be a Derek. <laughs> and he'll keep his sense of humor is immaculate. Yeah. Liam Fulton. Liam Fulton. Number two. Do they have to be no. Tigers? No, no, no. Number two will Former be teammates. okay. Tony Pulitor. He's a giant. So he can protect me from the dinosaurs <laughs> and the whatever's out no there. And... dinosaurs on this island. <laughs> I don't know. We can make it up. <laughs> Tony Pulitor. Okay. Number where's, he, where's, where's Tony these Tony days? is on the NRL judiciary panel. Yes. And he is doing for work. Uh, I'm not sure. what He's working in his family business alongside his brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's still living in Sydney. Yeah. Okay. It's still Tony. in great shape. Is he? Still a giant, yeah. Gentle giant, yeah. Frank, you know, how, how Tony and Frank, yes. Is Frank's the older, yeah. How's he looking? Is he still a he, giant too? Yeah, he's he's still a big boy. He looks after himself. He's working for the Pacific Rugby Union there. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So Tony's on there. Liam Fulton, you got one so more. One more. Space in the, space okay. In the boat. One more. Who's cooking? Who's cooking. catching the fish? <laughs> Who's doing all that sort of stuff? There's no, oh. yeah, you've got, you've got to live off the land. Live, live off the land. Okay, then I'll have to go with. You've got Liam to entertain. Yep, Tony, Tony to protect. And yeah, no, you're right. I'll look for a, a chef. There's a David the Ferner just rocking past. Fernsey, hello, mate. Are you on? Yeah, we're tr we've been trying to get. Very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah. You too. Looking forward to tonight. Chris was uh, very excited to get you here, mate. <laughs> he's doing a lot of talking so you know he's looking up to me yeah. been trying to, yeah no I've been trying to get David Ferner on the podcast okay. all season but he wants me to chase him yeah the trouble is they can't find vision because it's black and white <laughs> mate you're a decent player back in your <laughs> day don't worry about that black and white just telling me he's just telling me Fernsey uh, Mal was his childhood hero oh yeah, yeah great machine that's my, he was my childhood he team used to, used to yell at me all the time on the field <laughs> If Mal was playing today, what position would he be? Would he be in the centres or a left yeah, edge? Quick enough. Probably later on, but he's quick enough, mate. Yeah. He was. Could play. Quick centre. Well, thanks, Dave. That, there's a cameo appearance from yeah, David. For, I've been trying to get him on all season, but he's just he's been playing, Jeez, the, playing the hard to get card. Okay. Yeah. He'll get him. So, no, yeah. so, One more. Liam to entertain Tony Pulitzer to protect. Yeah. 
You got one more. Okay, one more. From any team? Any team. Teammate, it will have to be Shantine Harpy. So he played for the Warriors yeah. in 2000. He moved over to the UK, played for the Bradford Bulls, played for the New Zealand Shantine Kiwis, Harpy. played a number of test matches. The reason why I chose Shantine Harpy, well, he's still a good friend of mine, a dear friend of mine. And he is a hunter-gatherer. Oh, there we he go. Can, he can fish, he can dive, he can hunt. Yeah. There you go. He's my personal chef. Shantane Harpy, Tony Pulitua, and Liam Fulton. They're on the island. I like it. I like it. Um, okay. Your favourite bit of advice that, that you've been given? Favourite bit of advice you've been given by mm. anyone? Could be a coach, parent, friend, colleague. Teammate. Yeah, yeah, okay. We can come back to it. Yeah, I've, I've got a couple. And Koti Fanu Tume Tote, which means in Tiao Māori, family comes first. Uh, a part of my uh, rebuilding, my mental health state, and my well being was to reconnect with, with family. Uh, and in a way, the, the West Tigers are my family too. My brothers, they were able to achieve great success in. A part of my uh, healing was connecting with my 05 crew a decade ago yeah uh, so yeah family comes first and, and and be and practice gratitude every single day yeah purposely be grateful for the things that we do have uh, more so than the things we do not i don't want to sound cliche no. but tomorrow's not guaranteed chris no. tomorrow ain't guaranteed no. uh, the most important time is now and uh, you really got to be appreciative of, of what we have mm. so your brothers you call them from the 05 team they helped you get through some of the darker times they did and when you are mentally unwell, you've, you've got to drop your guard down and you've got to start to learn how to bring people back in. And, and like I said, reconnecting with my former teammates, my West Tigers crew, my brothers, that was a massive healing uh, for myself. And, and uh, I value those, those moments, but also I value when we catch up uh, together because life goes on and everyone's on their own life journey. Mm. But when you reconnect, you, you see Robbie, you see Benji, you haven't seen them in two or three years, you you, you take off where you, mm. where you left off the last time we caught up with each other. Mm. So, uh, yeah, life's, life's too precious, life's too short. We have to enjoy as much as we can. Mm. Nice. Finally, mate, 132 NRL games, Paul. Um, I think 53 tries in 132 NRL games. Probably your best strike rate was at West Tigers, um, 30 tries in about 58 games. So pretty much a try less than every second game. Your favourite try in your NRL career? My favourite try? Jump out. Number one. Oh, well, it had to be the first try. I didn't say this would be easy. Did I? There you go. There's Luke Brooks. Hey, brothers, good, thank you. Are you all right? There's Luke Brooks. And Trying to keep out of trouble. Jakey. Are you boys all right? Yeah, good, man. Good. Good luck tonight. Thanks, mate. You too. Good on you, Brooksy. See you, Brooksy. Gee, a lot of these boys are getting some little cameo appearances. That's Big Red too. Look at him go, Jakey. Big Red. <laughs> they're, getting the, they're getting the serious hat on now, heading yeah. out to the stadium shortly. Your favourite try? It had to be my first try. All I had to do was catch the ball and pull it down. It was actually passed by a buffer. Matty Guy. Matty Guy. I was playing on the wing. Matty Guy was playing centre. It was the first three minutes of the game. My first game for the Melbourne Storm. Uh, 99. In 2001. Uh, yeah. Yes, we're playing against the Cronulla Sharks. Uh, so I have to say my first try. And it happened in the first three minutes. Like I said, uh, Buffa just flicked it in. All I had to do was catch it and, and put it down. And I remember just being so excited. I'm jumping up like a little kid in the candy store. <laughs> yeah, and Mooksy Stephen Kearney comes over. He goes, hey, mate, settle down. It's so, only <laughs> so the first three minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I regained my composure. <laughs> <laughs> first, yeah. Yeah, nothing you, like your first. Nothing like your first. No. Didn't do much, but no. yeah. Mate, I appreciate you dropping in. I really do. It's been great having a, a chat. Oh, you're um, welcome, yeah, Chris. No, I really Enjoyed your time it. too. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, great to. I don't think we met in England. Maybe we might have bumped into each other. Maybe, but, maybe at a bar. Maybe at uh, what do you call it? The the My red back would, or what's the no, walkabout? No, 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 no. I, I, the, the Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> no, I stayed away from it. I didn't. I didn't want to meet Aussies. No. True. Uh, or Kiwis, local. a lot of Aussies and Kiwis in London. Yeah, no, good times. All right, uh, well, that's pretty much it, mate. Again, thanks very much for coming in. And, and, and I'm sure there's, there's some lessons there that we can all learn from, Paul. I really do appreciate um, having a, a, a deep and meaningful chat 
with you. We'll do it all again next week on Behind the Raw. Uh, good luck to uh, both of our teams this coming weekend, of course, at Combank Stadium. Our NRLW team will be taking on St George Illawarra Dragons. That's a 12.50pm kickoff, and the doubleheader then rolls into uh, our NRL team. They take on the Dolphins. So uh, hopefully you can get out there, and, and good luck to both of those teams this weekend. Until next time, uh, we'll do it all again. Uh, I was going to say same place, but it'll be in Sydney. It'll be the same time. Until then, you know the deal. Show your stripes. Behind the Wall, the official podcast of West Tigers.